Hello friends, uh, recently I read a book called How to Take Smart Notes and uh, along with this book I read a few other books related to learning and how to learn effectively. I thought of uh, doing a presentation on uh, this particular topic of learning and taking smart notes. Along with me, Emery John uh, Dogan will also be presenting. So I, Emery John is a good friend of mine and he is also my colleague and a very smart product manager and I've learned a ton from him on product management. So the way in which we will do is first I'm doing, we, we are doing our recording independently. So I'll do the recording first and then Emery John will uh, share uh, uh, the process that he uses for taking notes. With that, let's get started. First, we are all knowledge workers. What do I mean by knowledge workers? Anybody who thinks for a living is a knowledge worker. By that definition, I would say pretty much any, everybody in the 21st century is a knowledge worker. What does a knowledge worker do? Knowledge worker needs to think and for thinking knowledge worker needs to consume a ton of information, right? So one, you need to consume a ton of information, process that information effectively and, uh, and use that information to think. And that's what a knowledge worker does. Now, uh, here are some sources from where I consume my information. It ranges from uh, newspapers like uh, Financial Times and magazines like The Economist and uh, I consume information from books, blogs, YouTube videos, uh, through meetings, right? That's why I have Zoom there, through podcasts. There are various sources through which I consume information on a regular basis. On top of that, I read a lot of annual reports, S1 filings, analyst presentation and conference call transcripts. Now, if you look at the amount of information that uh, pretty much all of us consume on a daily basis, it would add up to somewhere between one to 10 gig of information. That is one to 10 gigabytes of information of many forms. It could be in the form of text, audio, video, etc. To put this number in perspective, one GB roughly translates to thousand books on Kindle. Let me repeat, one gigabyte is equal to thousand books on Kindle, right? But there is one problem. The problem is the processing capacity of our conscious mind has been estimated at 120 bits per second. If you know to, 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 get, a, to, to get a hang of what 120 bits per second means, think, imagine that uh, you know, I'm consuming uh, information using my conscious mind throughout an entire day, right? For 24 hours, which is not possible because we need to sleep, eat, et cetera, et cetera but let's pretend that I'm going to consume 120 bits per second throughout the day. So what it translates to 120 bits per second for 24 hours, it translates to 10 megabytes of data that our conscious mind can process. But the information we consume is roughly somewhere between say a gigabyte to 10 gigabytes, whereas the processing capacity at peak can be 10 megabytes, right, per day. And more, more likely than not, it'll be much, much lesser. So the difference between what enters versus what our conscious mind can process is 100x or 1000x. If not, it is 10,000x to 100,000x more, right? Now, the question is, how can we effectively process a gigabyte to 10 gigabytes of information when our processing capacity is not even close to 10 megabytes per day, right? In other words, uh, how do we create order out of chaos? So that 10 gigabytes of information that is coming in needs to be processed in a way where our capacity is only maybe a megabyte to 10 megabytes. That's the max that our conscious mind can process. So the question is, how do we create order out of chaos? Now, what I'm not going to tell you is like, oh, listen to this presentation, take effective notes. You can pretty much increase your capacity to process one gig to 10 gig of information. That is simply not possible because evolutionarily, there is a limitation of how much information that our conscious mind can process. But what I'm going to tell you is through effective note taking and effective learning, we can fine tune our filters. Filters are the way through which our brains pick and choose what information to process. That filter can be made more effective and efficient. So what happens with that is even though our capacity could be 120 bits per second, we can process that 120 bits very selectively and very efficiently so that we can learn a lot more. We can get to the essence of whatever we are processing rather than trying to 
process everything and getting lost in in the in the deluge of information that is flowing with it, right so how does note taking help us process or make our filter effective before looking at that uh, let's look at some of the principles for effective learning right so the first principle is called as retrieval practice so a group of eighth grade students studied science for three semesters on some modules they were quizzed on another module they were asked to reread the material without any quizzing after a few weeks the students were asked to take up an exam and uh, can you guess on which modules did the school students grade score higher grades did they score high grades on quiz modules or did they score high grades on non quiz modules think about it for a few seconds before i uh, give you the answer try to answer and also give yourself what why would that be the case right because by doing that you are going to learn effectively right so the answer should not surprise you the student the modules where the students were quizzed their grade was a minus compared to the modules where they just reread that is they just reread without being quizzed the grade that they got was c plus so the difference is a minus and c plus so in terms of grade it is like 78 uh, 92 for uh, quizzed modules versus 78 for non quizzed modules the question is why is there a difference why is retrieval important and what is retrieval in the first place right so retrieval practice is nothing but without looking at the book or without looking at um, a video lecture that you watched you try to recall information from your memory that is without referring to anything you are trying to recall information the act of that it's not easy to recall information right so when you read what happens the information enters your brain when you try to recall the information that comes out of your brain they don't go through the same neural pathways the pathways are very different so unless you try to recall information you, that information won't be available to you when needed so what recall retrieval practice does is it strengthens your neural pathways you are trying to pull it out of your head without looking at anything that strengthens the neural pathways so that that information will be available to you when needed so that's what happened to these students when they took an exam rereading did not help them instead the modules that they were quizzed they had to think maybe they have to think hard that thinking hard strengthened the neural pathways and this habit of pulling it out of your head without looking at anywhere is called as retrieval practice which is principle number 1 for effective learning principle number 2 is called as mixing it up so a group of 8 year old students practiced tossing bean bags into buckets right half the group practiced throwing bean bags from 3 feet away the other half mixed it up by throwing it from 2 feet away and 4 feet away right two groups one group did it 3 feet another group threw from 2 uh, feet away and 4 feet away after 12 weeks they were all tested on tossing into the bucket that is 3 feet away now try to answer the question which group performed better and not only that try to reason why the group that you think performed better perform better right give a reason try to answer that question so again right surprisingly the group that practiced throwing from 2 feet away and 4 feet away they did better on 3 feet compared to the group that practiced throwing from 3 feet away right now this is surprising the reason is how can a group that mixed it up by throwing it from in 2 feet and from 4 feet can do better by throwing it in 3 feet right the reason here is by mixing things up you are making it harder right i mean you feel like man this is not coming to me this is really really hard that hard work is making your brain encode that in piece of information in higher parts of the brain so that you can recall it later and the, this information gets encoded better in your brain now mixing it up also has another advantage the advantage is called as transfer learning see in real life problem does not come labeled to you like you know in in schools what happens is let's take for example you learn trigonometry and then uh, you and then you are taught a particular concept in trigonometry then you would do some exercises right that exercise pretty much you would know that i have to apply this formula because you just looked at the formula so you can mindlessly solve that exercise uh, without even thinking right 
So that kind of learning is not useful. And that's what happened when kids were throwing it from three feet away. Rather, in real life, what happens is problem does not come labeled to you. You don't even know what problem you are solving. Then you have to figure out which concept should I apply and which concept should I combine to solve this particular problem. This requires a lot of work. By mixing a top, what you are doing is you are making that learning stick longer. It is more durable, and not only that, you might be able to use that knowledge to solve a problem in a different domain. That's what mixing a top does. It's a very, very effective form of learning, right? So this is principle number two: to learn effectively, mix things up. Say, for example, if you are learning, um, let's take uh, trigonometry, right? Don't solve the same exercise problem one after the other using the same pattern. Instead, solve a problem from say chapter one, which uses concept X, and then mix it up with another problem from say chapter four, which uses concept Y, and then mix it up with another problem which uses concept uh, maybe Z. Uh, so by mixing it up, you are making it harder, but your learning is going to be more durable. The third technique is called as uh, spaced repetition. So thirty-eight surgical residents they took a short uh, four short lessons in microsurgery, right? so one group or half the doctors what they did was they completed all all four lessons in a single day so the way in which the lessons work is you would receive some instructions followed by some practice half the doctors completed it in a single day the other group completed four lessons in in a week interval between them in the, in the sense instead of finishing it all on the same day they kind of spaced it out over a week and then both the groups were tested after one month now which group did better did the group that finished it all in the same day did better or did the group that took a week to finish did better think about it before you know before you listen to what i'm going to say next while trying to answer the question also reason why because that helps you to learn effectively and uh, here the group that spaced their practice out instead of finishing it all in the same day the group that kind of spread it out over a week they did better and the reason for that is you know the way in which the human brain works you have a short term memory and you have long term memory so when we are learning new things right the information gets processed by short term memory and it takes time for this information to get promoted to long term memory and to get properly encoded in the long term memory for this to happen it takes time by spacing things up you are revisiting the concept over and over allowing your brain to process this information and strengthen those connection and secure it and lock it permanently so that that information will be available readily to you when needed and the forgetting will be much much slower compared to cramming it all on a same day or in a single day this is the reason why spaced repetition works so so far what we have seen is we have seen three principles right principle one is retrieval practice instead of uh, you know try to recall what you learned without referring to the original material it could be a book or a video or a podcast try to recall it from your memory the second thing is mixing it up rather than doing the same kind of problems again and again try to mix problems up so that your learning becomes more durable and effective the third principle that we looked at is spaced repetition rather than finishing it all in a same day kind of space it out let some forgetting happen and then get to it again right then there are a couple of other important things to know about learning uh, it's called as elaboration and generation what is an elaboration elaboration is nothing but you are learning something express whatever you have learned in your own words and connect it with something that you already know right this is what a feynman used to call right i mean or it's called as a feynman technique if you are trying to understand a brand new concept you know open a sheet of paper blank sheet of paper explain that concept in your own words as if you are trying to explain it to a fifth grader try to connect it with ideas that you already know say you are learning something in physics right it could be on angular momentum just try to relate it to a real world example oh how does angular momentum works when an ice skater kind of closes in like this right so that the, they they would spin faster so you are making an abstract concept concrete by connecting it with things that you already know connecting with it with concrete things this process is called as elaboration the next is called as generation generation is very simple 
let's say you are trying to answer a question and you don't even know the concept right say it, it could be a problem in algebra and you don't even know what that uh, concept is it doesn't matter try to solve the problem you might not be able to solve it but the act of you putting in that effort will help you to learn better when you actually learn the solution so whenever you try to you know encounter a problem make a guess it's okay the guess can be wrong 9 times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100 but that effort of generating an answer will till your brain so that the learning is durable it sticks it it is receptive to the knowledge that you are going to receive one example let's say for example right somebody who is uh, new to california uh, if and this is say they are, they have been in california for a week or two and someone asks them what's the capital of uh, california um let's take they live in the bay area they, just the act of they might not know sacramento is the answer but by saying like oh is san jose the capital sunnyvale the capital these are cities in uh, places where i live uh, or palo alto the capital that act of trying to answer is good enough for them to remember sacramento when they come to know about the answer right so elaboration and generation are important techniques or principles for effective learning uh okay now try to remember the number that are red in color right look at it once uh, maybe i'll do a count of say 7 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 to recollect it as this there is a very high chance i would say you know 99.99% of the people they cannot re- uh, recall, recall all the numbers that was displayed the reason is very simple when you are trying to remember arbitrary information here it is a set of numbers right which does not have any meaning we will be using our working memory but our working memory has a limitation the limitation is you can maybe store somewhere between four pieces of information to seven pieces of information a piece here i'm saying it could be a two digit number or a three digit number um so so you can only recollect maybe up to four to seven for me i would struggle to recollect anything beyond three or four digit number now what if i tell you these numbers are nothing but five years of world cup soccer numbered consecutively from the year 1958 right now for you to recall this is super easy the reason is because you need to know the starting year which i have given you it is 1958 then you need to know that world cup soccer happens every 4 years and then the recalling is easy 1958 62 sorry 1958 62 60 uh one second 5 years of world cup soccer okay so basically it's 4 years right so so sorry i think so all you need to know is the starting year which is 1958 and world cup happens every 4 years once you know that information all you would have to do is it's 58 62 66 70 and uh 74 right so that's what it is right so remembering things becomes easy when you understand it in this case there is no understanding it's a bunch of numbers you cannot understand numbers but the moment you tie those number into a rule the rule is very simple which year should i start i should start from 1958 and i know that every 4 years world cup soccer happens and i am asked to remember 5 years now then bingo you get it right 58 62 66 70 and 74 so what is the key idea behind the uh, behind this particular exercise the idea is very simple we remember what we understand this is why right in school at least for me i memorized so many things including periodic table i forgot everything right i mean pretty much most of it because when you blindly memorize things you might score uh, high marks in exams but the problem is that information won't stick longer i can't apply that knowledge to solve a problem right so the key to learning is remember, for, for learning and remembering or deep learning is basically you understand right so to recollect all the principles of effective learning that we have seen so far one is retrieval practice so instead of after you finish reading a book or listening to a lecture or a youtube video or a podcast try to recollect what you learned without referring to the original material it's going to make your learning more durable and much more stronger the second thing is mixing things up 
do not try to solve the same problem over and over and over try to mix kinds of problems that you are solving and this was this is what happened when uh, kids practiced throwing bean bags from uh, two and four feet rather than just uh, from uh, say three feet right and the third thing is spaced repetition rather than cramming it all in a single day let some forgetting happen then go and revisit the material it's going to be hard which is very understandable but that's when learning is going to be more durable right then we learnt about elaboration try to explain it in your own words as if you're talking to a fifth grader try to generate an answer just make a guess even though you might not know the answer or you might not even know how to solve this particular or approach this particular problem and the last piece that we looked at is if you have to remember something you need to understand if you have to learn something deeply you need to understand right so these are some of the key principles of learning with that let's do a demo of uh, things that i learned from uh, how to take smart notes and uh, how uh, how did i uh, you know capture those notes and how did it help uh, in me uh, preparing this presentation right so again the tool that i'm using is notion uh, notion is a software that is that is pretty much free if you are using it for your own personal use if you are going to share it with anyone other than you then you would have to pay for the software again right uh, the goal of this particular presentation is not to say notion is better or another software is better i don't think tool matters or tool doesn't matter it's the principle behind the learning is important okay so let me switch my view to gallery view so so first thing right is uh, i'm going to explain what i did after reading how to take smart notes right so first whenever you read anything in this case i read it on a physical book i have always have a pen in hand pen or pencil in my hand i take a lot of notes i scribble i underline i try to uh, you know write on it or not try i write a lot of stuff on it right it, my my book will be littered with a lot of notes there are a couple of reasons why i do that one it makes me uh stay active which is the primary reason where it's very hard for uh, my mind to wander when i'm actively taking notes on a book or when i'm you know writing scribbling underlining what not right which is reason number one and reason number two is i strongly believe that writing uh, helps me to learn uh, things deeper right so that's step number one step number two is i summarize the book so what i do is so this is what i learned from the book so chapter by chapter i kind of write it in my own words in terms of what i learned right i mean uh, for each chapter what are all the key ideas that i learned from that book or what stood out to me right my notes for a chapter could be different from the notes that you might take for this particular chapter in a book the reason is we are wired differently what i found useful could be a little different or a lot different from another person so what i do is i make sure that i uh, capture some of the essence uh, from the book chapter by chapter and uh, mostly these are written in my own words and sometimes i would uh, you know uh, borrow the lines and words from the book if the author did a better job than i could do so i would do that then what i did was uh, the author for how to take smart notes book is sonki aherens he did a wonderful talk on youtube so i uh, captured the essence of that as well like what did i learn the talk was for 35 minutes or 40 minutes i don't remember exactly how long but it's somewhere between 30 to 40 minutes so i said okay let me uh, take notes on that as well right which is step 2 step 1 is basically read actively on a physical book i try to uh, write on the book on kindle it's basically highlighting and then export the highlight and go take a look at the highlight later it's a little to a lot harder to take notes on kindle you would have to do after the after you have done with your highlighting and exporting of highlighting then uh, related to this particular topic of taking smart notes i read another well i reread another book which i read back in 2015 it's a wonderful book if you want to know about the principles of learning it's called as make it stick same idea like you know what are the big ideas that stood to me uh, chapter by chapter and then i uh, uh, listened to uh, uh, you know i read another blog post uh, by uh, a guy named simon uh, simon who works for shopify uh he's a director uh for shopify infrastructure teams i thought his blog post was uh, brilliant so i said okay let me uh, uh pull out some of the key 
uh, key learnings, right? And a few other friends that I spoke to, I pretty much captured the essence, right? This is my second step, right? Am I done? Is my learning going to be effective after I'm done with this particular step? The answer is no. Uh, the reason is there is another important step, which is called as a slip box or Zettelkasten. So I will explain more what it means, right? While I'm done with the demo. So the idea here is very simple. So let me, you know, tag it. And then I'm going to give a default view over here. Uh, okay. So what I do next is, right, okay, I've learned uh, about this particular topic of taking smart notes and effective learning from books, YouTube videos, talking to my friends. What next, right? I've captured it. Now what I do is I try to look at it all and then say, what are some big ideas or the gist of what I learned? And I try to write it in my own words. Say, for example, Let's talk about generation, right? Because I used it in my uh, uh, presentation. So I try to write in my own words what generation means, right? If you look at it, this is hardly two and a half paragraphs long or maybe not more than three paragraphs long. You just write it as if it's going to stick in a small sheet of paper where I don't need to scroll my, uh, my uh, scroll this page to read the full content just the essence of a generation is captured here. The act of trying to answer a question or attempting to solve a problem before presented with the information of source solution is generation, right? And a few additional details there. Similarly, while I was learning, um, you know, I re read about unlearning as well, right? I mean, and I'm, I'm, you know, taking a small essence of this is like, unlearning is much harder compared to learning new things. And then finally, I try to kind of relate it with things that I already know. In this case, it's much harder to teach new dogs, uh, uh, new tricks to an old dog. And also I'm relating it to my real life experiences, right? As an engineer, I found, uh, you know, transitioning from an object oriented programming language to functional is a little to a, hard, a lot harder. Investors trained in Grahamian style, uh, you know, struggled to adopt the buffer. Even Buffett is trying to, you know, finding it hard to outperform in the world dominated by technology companies, right? So these are some learnings from my personal experience. It could be right or wrong. That doesn't matter. This is my personal experience that I'm summarizing it and I'm capturing the essence of it, right? So, so now here's the key, right? If you look at all these things are two or three short paragraphs long and then I'm tagging it. Tagging is the most important thing that I would be doing. For example, uh, these are all tags related to learning, right? Most of the tags are related to learning. Some of it I'm, I'm capturing more and more because I'm getting used to this idea of slip box. Uh, and here is the key. The key here is you would start connecting idea from one slip box to idea from another slip box and that could cross domains in the sense let me take another example, which I was doing yesterday. Take the idea of stress, right? I have created it under a tag called as health, mindset and psychology. Now let's look at, you know, it's a very short note that I took, right? About stress and I'm saying it's not worth it. Life is short. If you look at these links, these, this particular note is referring to my other note, right? So you are basically creating links by through this mechanism where I'm connecting an idea from let's take health to an idea called as life is short, which is in a tag the life or stoic or mindset, right? I'm pretty much tagging it across the board. Now these are your back references where here are other big ideas that is connecting to this idea. This is where the real power comes in, where what I'm trying to do is I'm just capturing the essence of my learning. See, the entire book is summarized into maybe 10 or 12 short uh, note. And I'm just putting it inside, uh, making it permanent. And I'm creating links between all these ideas. Now, what it does is you might not see it adding a lot of value today. But imagine what happens when you have been doing this for one year, two years, three years, right? 
you will have so many nodes and you would have created your mental model that is deeply, deeply connected. Now, if you are encountering a real life situation or you're trying to solve a problem, you don't need to pull all of it from your memory because remember, right? Human brain has its own limitations. You might not be able to retrieve it at the right time. Rather, I would say like, okay, I did some thinking. Now, this particular topic is related to, let's take, you know, life principles. So I would search for a tag life. Then, oh, here are some notes that I've taken about life, right? Uh, oh, and then I would say like, okay, what does all is well do here? You know what? Uh, this is, uh, the idea here is very simple. It just comes from the movie Three Idiots where Amar Khan tells uh, why one should say all is well. Oh, this is very, very interesting. Or let's take I'm undergoing stress in life. I would say like, oh, what did I write, right? What big ideas, right, that did I write about? What other ideas that it connects to? So rather than me getting sucked into my current vicious negative loop, I would go out of my head and say like, what did I write about this particular topic or a subject? And the beauty about slip boxes, I'm not, see, look, it, it does not have any hard categories in the sense I'm not saying this is a concept from biology, physics, or this is a concept about life. They are all under the same folder or same database in Notion. All I'm doing is I'm just tagging. Just make sure your tags are richer because that is when you're going to retrieve the information or that's the mechanism you're going to use to retrieve the information. The essence of, see, the whole idea is not about collect more and more and more notes. That's not the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise is every day I want to make it useful, right? I mean, every day, let's take, you know, we have 24 hours in a day. Let's take I'm productive for six hours or eight hours in a day. I'm learning so much. Why don't I capture this knowledge and digitize it and put it outside, right? So that I can, you know, create leverage for my brain where I'm not going to be limited by my current capacity of the brain, even though the long-term memory of is infinite, still in the thick of things, that information might not be available to you. By properly tagging, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is, I'm just pulling the information that I need at the right time. Here's one other example, right? Before I switch back to the presentation is, uh, you know, teach others to learn, right? I mean, this, I got it from uh, Professor Sanjay Bakshi's tweet long back. I'm just saying we learn 95% of what we teach to others, right? Boom, pretty much it's there. So imagine I want to improve my writing. I've been accumulating content after content after content. Maybe I don't need to read another book or two or three. All I, do, I will do is I'll go back to my notes and just pull the information that I need, right? So with that, uh, let's switch back and then I'm going to uh, put it in the presentation mode. Okay. Now, what is this slip box that I was talking about, right? So this gentleman, his name is Nicholas Luhmann. He's a sociologist from Germany. He was born, I believe, in 1927, and uh, he passed away somewhere in the late 90s. So what this gentleman did was he was, he was a super productive. What do I mean by super productive is he has written over 60 plus books and has published hundreds of papers in his field, right? How can a person in his lifetime produce so many books and publish so many papers? So Nicholas Luhmann's productivity has been attributed to the method that he uses. It's called as Zettelkasten. Zettelkasten in Germany uh, stands for slip box. The idea of slip box is nothing. It's nothing but a, your drawer where you would put in uh, the post-it notes that you see on the rights. So what this gentleman did, every day he would... Uh, religiously write on average around six notes where each idea would be captured in a particular post-it note. Uh, I don't think it was called posted back then. So it was a paper that he would capture this piece of information. He would tag that particular idea. In our example, that tag could be learning or that tag could be mindset, whatnot. And then he would kind of create hierarchies within that, right? Ideas that are related would be grouped under the same tag, right? And then he uses a numbering system, like one, if you look at it, it's one slash one, one, it's one slash one slash one, where, you know, one slash one goes behind one and one slash one slash one goes behind one slash one. He had to do this own, he has to invent his own hierarchy because, you know, there were, there were computers were not that, common right back then so he had to painstakingly take a manual route 
luckily we have so many softwares that are out there we 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 can kind of you know uh, leverage the power of technology here and then the red arrows are linking ideas over here for example let's take this particular idea refers to this particular idea and then he has an index card where this tag one is referenced in one two and one one right so he knows where to jump to in our case since it is all digitized we can directly go and use filters and search and then follow one link after another so we don't need to painstakingly do this what we need to be careful about is uh, to make sure that you capture the essence of an idea in a short paragraph or two the idea has to be atomic drone try to mix too many ideas under the same idea and then properly tag it that's the key so that in that information is available to you when you need it right now um there are three kinds of notes that are possible um what the first one is called as fleeting notes the second one is called as literature notes and the third one is called as permanent notes fleeting notes are very short lived they are ephemeral where say for example i'm attending a meeting right or maybe i'm reading an article on an economist i might scribble something there right i might take uh, notes on back of the napkin or in my notebook or some th thought pops into my head i might scribble somewhere and keep it right so usually most of the fleeting notes maybe 90% 95% might be thrown away but some of it right where i might find a spark or an idea that might get promoted into a permanent note permanent note is nothing but the slip box that i demo right now what are literature note literature notes are you know things that you read from a book youtube videos podcasts etc etc i kind of summarize my learning right pretty much summarize the whole book or that youtube video or the lecture that you listen to not everything that is summarized would get into the permanent notes for example if you look at my summary of make it stick how to take smart notes and a bunch of things that i did my summary notes might be you know 15 pages long maybe 10 to 15 pages long but the slip box notes or the permanent notes might be like two or three pages long that is it it's the condensed f uh, essence of what i learned and that piece of information is something that i want to use it not just for a month or two but permanently in my throughout my life right so so these are all the possible or three kinds of notes that are out there and we looked at uh, you know both literature notes and permanent notes now what are the advantages of zettelkasten method uh the first one is one idea per note allow you to combine ideas across discipline right so a note is atomic where for example if i'm uh, talking about all is well i'm just going to talk about that i would not mix that with some other concept now what it allows me to do is i can combine ideas remember right all these ideas are on the same folder or in that same database i'm hyperlinking and that hyperlink is what is allowing me to combine ideas from different disciplines so it allows me to solve problems in very novel ways that's what this does right and the second one is focus on the process and not worry about the outcomes right so in the past say the act of writing a blog let's say i'm researching a company i want to write about that particular company the amount of effort is a lot i would spend hours and hours right uh, producing a meaningful content uh, it's a lot of effort but writing a short note a day or two maybe two notes a day or even three notes a day a paragraph or two long that is very easy i'm not even trying to come for an outcome right i'm not even focusing on an outcome instead what i'm trying to do is i just want to learn i want to capture the gist of what i learned so let me just capture that in a paragraph or two this is a very liberating experience right at least in the last few days i would have written maybe over 30 plus notes the reason is it's very simple where i'm just capturing the gist and i'm just you know accumulating that over a period of time the next thing is avoiding confirmation and recency bias right see human brain has its own limitations and one of the limitations is our biases where we are easily over influenced by uh, recency anything that happened recently and that is vivid we would overweigh that information even though the base rates is what we need to go by right so recency is going to overweigh and influence us a lot more and uh, we have a habit of confirming things rather than disconfirming things so i want to uh, search for reasons why i should buy this particular company we would just go after information that is going to confirm our belief rather than disconfirming it 
So what slip box this taking permanent note does is, okay, you're learning a concept. So your summary will be, uh, what did I learn? What are some ideas that this idea is already validating and complementing? What are some ideas that I have been believing for this long, this particular idea is contradicting. So you're going to capture that information as well. See, you don't have a goal of writing a blog or a book or anything. Your goal is simple. It's intrinsic. It's learning. I'm just going to capture the essence of my knowledge and I'm going to see how this knowledge connects to what I already know. How does it validate that concept? How does it contradict that concept? So you're accumulating that knowledge. So it helps you to at least minimize, I should not use the word avoid, minimize confirmation and recency bias. And the fourth one is focusing on the forest instead of trees by writing the gist of what you learned. See, remember, right? I think my earlier slide, I said, you know, one to 10 gig of uh, information that is flowing in and our processing capacity might be a megabyte to 10 megabytes uh, uh, possibility, right? Again, these are estimations, right? I could be off by 100x or 1000x, who knows, right? What the actual processing capacity is. Now, this slip box method, it's not going to let you consume a gigabyte because evolution doesn't evolve that fast, right? That limitation is something that we all need to live with. But the act of focusing on the, just focusing on the forest rather than the trees allows you to focus on the essence of your learning. And that essence is nothing but the filter. You're making your filter sharper, right? This is why luminaries uh, across different disciplines, they are really, really good because they know what to focus on and they know what to avoid. That is more, more, more even more important because you're avoiding 99.9% .9 of the, you know, 99.9 .9 is noise and you're looking for that one or 0.1% of the signal. That's what focusing on the forest instead of the trees lets you do. And you, practice, you practice writing daily, right? And not only that, all key principles of learnings gets used, right? By writing it in your own words, what are you doing? We are doing retrieval practice. Now I'm looking at all slip boxes. What am I doing? I'm mixing things up rather than, you know, looking at things from one particular discipline or the current concept, I'm mixing it all up, right? So mixing it up happens. Then what happens is spaced repetition. I'm getting exposed to those concepts over and over, over a period of time continuously. So it is like a flight simulator, right? You get to practice what you have learned in the past. So the forgetting does not happen. And another thing, you know, for you to remember something deeply, you need to understand, you cannot write effectively without understanding, right? So you are understanding things deeply. Then you are writing it in your own words, which is nothing but you're elaborating, right? So you are pretty much practicing all the principles of effective learning by, by this technique. The last but not the least and probably the most important point is compounding effect is massive when slip box gains critical mass, right? It's, it's like this, right? You go to a gym for the first one month, you might not see any, not much changes. Maybe your body will like, man, what is going on, right? I'm hating this. But what happens when you keep up at keep at it for one year, two years, three years, right? The actual compounding effect starts to take place. And that's what happens with slip box. Once you reach a critical threshold of the number of notes that you have, once you start connecting all these ideas, once you get into the habit of regularly using it, this is going to provide massive effects. Again, right, my note taking has been all over the place until very recently. So I've been writing a lot on my book. So I scribble a lot so that, that I've been doing that, right, for, for, for quite some time now. And the rest of the information, they are all in Google Docs and they are on my blog. What I'm trying to do now, I'm just trying to build up this uh, slip box over a period of time. It's not like I'm writing so many things on a daily basis. I'm just saying, you know, whatever I'm learning, let me get the essence of one or two things that I learned today and I'm capturing that. So that exercise has been fun and I'm enjoying it so far and we'll see how this is going to uh, keep up. Uh, before I hand it over to Emery John, my product uh, partner and my colleague and my friend, uh, here are a few things that I found really, really useful uh, to put together this presentation. How to Take Smart Notes is a wonderful book uh, where pretty much I learned a lot. Uh, whatever I'm sharing, it came from that book and uh, Make It Stick, which probably if you have to read one book on uh, the science of successful learning, I would say read uh, Make It Stick. 
and how to make yourself into a learning machine is a wonderful wonderful uh, uh, blog post that i would highly encourage to uh, reading and the last one is uh, a few apps that helped uh, ali become super productive uh, i am not using all of them but at least i'm using uh, insta paper now i'm using notion and i would uh, uh, try out read wise but so far i've been avoiding it but i might try out read wise i would encourage you to watch this 11 minute video right so before i hand it over one last thing that i wanted to share which is like you know how i created this presentation it's very simple right once all the effort is done i have taken literature notes i have taken slip box putting together this presentation is a piece of cake because i already have all the raw materials needed it's just stitching together uh, it in a presentable form and that did not take a lot of time it, i would have said maybe it would have taken a couple of hours right not more than that to put together this presentation right i have to figure out oh, what image should i put here here etc other than that it was it was a blissful experience with that uh, i'm going to give it to emery john so emery john what he has been doing uh, he has been following this technique uh, of organizing his notes using air table for 3 years now uh, so it's it's fascinating to see how he has been doing it so with that i would hand it over to emery john thank you